What is going on guys? This is LaserBolt from GamerFusion.com bringing you today a quick tutorial on how to use Sony Vegas 13, uh, the new Sony Vegas that came out, and what rendering settings you should have on your actual project files. Um, you know, I did a lot of testing when it came out a couple, two days ago. Uh, I, you know, checked out, you know, what would be the best rendering settings, what would be, you know, exact way to actually make your Sony Vegas work correctly, and how to get the best quality of video out there. Now, I did find out that on Sony Vegas 12, I'm actually rendering something on Sony Vegas 12 right now, but on so when Sony Vegas 12 came out, um, I tried to do 1080p, but the rendering time was a big gap between 720. Now, on Sony Vegas 13, the gap is a lot smaller. You're actually able to, you know, render out... Um, a lot faster, which is ironic, in uh, 1080p than 720. Um, I tried the difference, about the difference is about 2 minute difference between 720p and 1080p. On 720p, you're probably like looking at about, you know, 9 minutes uh, for a 15 minute video. That's on my actual computer. And then on 15 minute video for 1080p, I'm able to produce that in a 7 minutes. So it's a 2 minute difference. I tried CPU, GPU, um, different types of renderings. To find out what exactly was the best thing to do, uh, my computer actually is very pow powerful. So my GPU and my uh, CPU render about the same amount of time. Uh, not only seconds of difference are the ones that are actually encountered. Well, this is what Sony Vegas 13 looks like. I'm pretty sure if you guys have been using Sony Vegas for quite a while now, you're pretty familiar with the layout and what the actual format of the uh, you know of the interface looks like. I was expecting a little different interface, uh, but it seems like it was mostly uh, updates on plugins and uh, different types of codecs and giving you a little bit of better uh, ability to uh, be able to render out a little bit faster. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to get a video coming in for the, um, you know, so we could put in our template file and, uh, you know, get started like that. Of course, we're going to want to have our watermark, our intro and whatnot, but this is just for a quick uh, tutorial. We're just going to do it a quick run and see what we could do with regarding that issue. So let's go ahead and get a video from one of my gameplays. Let's see if I still have the actual gameplay from, uh, I believe, yesterday when I played Elite. So I'm pretty sure this is it right here. So once you enter the, your video, you're going to get this pop-up. It's going to say Vegas 13, right? Do you want to set the project video settings to match the media? This is going to be very crucial because you're going to want to set it up. Because as you guys know, different capture cards use different types of settings. And if you already have a template, then it's going to down compress or up compress a different type of file that you have. So you're going to always going to want to have your uh, media file be matched to you know the project pile. So I uh, when I record my gameplay, I record it uh, 1080p. Uh, I do 30 frames uh, for, per second. And, uh, you, you know, and it's 19 by 20. So you're just going to want to put yes on right here. If that's you, I'm a, right now, just click yes. And it automatically make your project file the same uh, same stat status that your, um, your video is. So you're going to want to go right here to see what the project file looks like. And as you guys see, it already says 1920 by 1080p. Uh, if the frame rate is different, it should actually be 30, so you're going to want to change that to 30. That's if you guys record in 30 frames per second. Now, you got to make sure if you're using your PVR, your HPVR2, your Oxio, or your Elgato, that you're going to be recording in 30 frames because that's going to be crucial. If you're recording 24 frames, you're going to have to leave this at 24 or set this to whatever frame rate you're recording at. I record at 30 frames, so all I do is change that right there, and it's um, set up. Then we have everything else is pretty much standard, and then we're ready to go. Uh, and we're going to want to, we see where it says adjust source media to better match the rendering settings. So basically what this does is it's going to say, okay, well, whatever you put in here, you're going to want, it's going to fix this so it could match this. So. I always disable it because I changed the 30 frames and the video is 30 frames. So it's going to automatically be 30 frames. So just press OK. And then you're going to have your video already set up with your project. Now the key question is comes in, into play is what what do I render, render this out? You know, what, there's different types of rendering templates now. So you're going to go to File, Render As. I already have a template set up, which I call YouTube 10, uh, 1080p. I'm going to give you guys a quick idea of where this is at so you guys can get an idea. You're going to want to go to, um, you're going to have different types of rendering. Let me just close out this um, video right here. Um, you're going to want to come to where it says Sony AVC MCV. 
Now, a lot of people have the misconception that you have to use main concept AVC, ACC. You could use that as well. But the secret here is that if you use the Sony Codex, the rendering time is a lot faster compared to the um, main concept. Now, this is going to be key depending on your GPU, uh, what type of graphic cards you, you have. But if you have a decent graphic cards, you're able to skip the main concept and just go straight down where it says Sony. You're going to want to do the Sony AVC MCV. And you're going to want to pick Internet 1920 by 1080, 30 frames, you know, 30, 30 frames per second. So that's what I picked, but I already customized this. So let's open that up. And that's the template where you would find it. So you're going to want to come down here and you're going to see where it says ABC. You're going to want to leave that. You're going to want to leave that. You're going to want to uncheck. This is check where it says allow source to adjust frame size. You're going to want to uncheck that. You're going to want to change this. If this is at 29, you're going to want to change this to 30. You're going to want to uncheck where it says allow source to adjust frame rate. You're going to want to keep that unchecked. Pixel aspect ratio, you're going to leave it at 1. And now this is the tricky part, the bit rate. Um, I think on default, the bit rate on this one is 16 uh, million. You're going to want to drop that down to 10 million. Now you're going to ask me, why do I want to drop it down to 10 million if it's at 16 million, right? So that's the key question. Now, let me give you guys a little uh, back background. Um, if you guys check up on anything that's called uh, video encoding, it's whatever you upload to video gets encoded, as you guys already know. You'll notice this if you ever download, were to download a uh, video or anything like that, it's going to have a different uh, uh, file size. So if your video is like one gigabyte, when you download it from YouTube, like say you want to download a video or whatnot, it's going to be at least like you know 400 to 500 megabytes. So you're going to be a, see a big difference from whatever you rendered up to the amount of file size you have. Now that means it was encoded. So what does encoding mean? So let's say I put I bump this out, I bump this up to like 50 uh, bit rates, right? Regardless of whatever I bump this up to, it's always going to get downcoded on YouTube. So for you to for you to get a good amount of a uh, bit rate, you just want to want to leave it at 10. You don't want to. You could even go like if you you know if you want to maybe reduce the rendering time. Say like if you're struggling with this type of rendering time, and you just want to reduce the the time a little bit. You're gonna you could bump this down to eight. You could bump this down as low as five. Five would be like the lowest you could go, and it would kind of produce like 720p quality, even though the video is 1920 by 1080p. But but the bit rate down to five, it's gonna give you that 720 look. So you're gonna want to do either five if you're really desperate on time, but you still want to do 1080p. You're gonna want to do eight if you're you know mid range and you know you're you're doing pretty good with five, and you know you just want to bump it up a little bit. And if your computer's really good, then you could just do like 10. You could even go as far as 30 uh, bit rates, which is the maximum YouTube does. But I wouldn't recommend that because that would be um, Ludicrous, we would just want to do like the 4K quality in that case. But 1080p would give you the best 1080p quality you could make on the actual market. Now, the encoding mode is another tricky part. If you have a good GPU, you could render with GPU. But most people don't have a good GPU, so you're going to want to do uh, uh, render CPU only. Now, the Intel QuickSync video quality and Intel QuickSync video speed. Now, these are specific um, CPU cards that allow you to sync the video and render the video a lot faster. You're going to have to download some uh, Intel codecs for that. And so you can get that fast quality and make that. Uh, this is very helpful and does make your, your actual render time go a lot faster. Like if you were to, uh, you know, for example, me, I do seven minutes. It probably let me do it like in three minutes based on the actual CPU that you have. So depending on the, on, you know, on the chip you have, you're going to be able to use that. But we'll go in a different video on that, on, you know, how to use that and how that works. So you're going to do render using CPU. Uh, you're going to click the audio tab, just make sure it's 48 and uh, 28. Now, this is another tricky part because sometimes the PVRs change this and they have different types of audio. So you're going to want to, you know, see what you're actually, you know, producing and what you're trying to get out of from your actual PVR or whatever recording device you have. You're going to say your product, use project settings, which is pretty much the file format on that. And then you're going to want to click OK. One important thing I did forget was... If you guys notice, sometimes videos seem a little bit fuzzy or a little bit bumpy. You're always going to want to make, especially if it's a fast-paced game like Call of Duty, Titanfall, anything that you know causes a lot of movement or there's a lot of animation in it, you're going to want to right-click, click Properties, and you're going to want to go where it says Disable Resample. So what that's going to do, it's going to de-interlace this actual video. So when there's a lot of movement, let me show you guys. Let me see if we could actually pick this up 
and see um, what it looks like. All right, so if you guys notice, um, let me see if they find. Okay, so right here, if you guys see that, all right. So let me go back on time and do the resampling, and then you guys could see the difference of what I'm talking about. Hopefully, you guys are able to see. If you guys see that, you see that quick change on the screen. It keeps the fuzziness out. So you see how there's no. It doesn't look so so jumpy now. That's because the resampling. So you're gonna always want to disable your resampling. I have an actual script that you know get put lets you put a button up here and uh, you just click on it and it'll disable the resampling for you without having to right click. I'll share that with the partners, uh, with anybody needs that for their Sony Vegas. Now that's pretty much what you're gonna do. So you're gonna go file render as. You're gonna want to pick that template I showed you. you obviously you're gonna want to rename it up here. You rename it whatever you want and click that little icon once you set everything from here up. And then once you guys have that set up, you save, you press OK. You're going to go, um, you know, to where it's at and make sure you click the little star. So you can just click this box and it's always going to show up right here. So you won't have to go through that long list of uh, rendering settings. All right, guys, this has been LaserBolt from GamerFusion.com bringing you a tutorial on how to render 1080p on the new Sony Vegas 13. I hope this was helpful. And if you guys want to see more videos on Sony Vegas or, you know, what cool stuff you could do with that program, don't forget to hit me up at GamerFusion.com and drop me off what you guys like or in this video down below. This has been LaserBolt. Don't forget, GamerFusion empowers your gaming.